What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here and this is 5 Strange Facts, a show where we take a look at the weird side of gaming history. Recently, Mario turned 35 years old, and in the course of that three decades, he's been in hundreds of different games, spanning everything from the original Nintendo to cell phones. At this point, I think it's safe to say that he's one of the most recognizable icons in all of gaming. Today, though, we're going back to the plumber's rather secretive past to count down my picks for five strange facts about Mario games. Number 5. Nintendo's Important Experiment our red-headed hero has appeared in many different kinds of projects. He's driven race carts, saved Princess Peach, and battled his friends in a giant board game, but oddly, one of his greatest legacies is all based on a nearly forgotten gem. Mario & Wario was a Super Nintendo game released only in Japan. Gameplay was all about using the SNES mouse to click boxes and help Mario escape traps set by his evil rival, Wario. While this isn't an especially unique title, it does serve a vital role in gaming. The director of this game, Satoshi Tajiri, loved working on this Mario puzzler for Nintendo, but his real major plan was to gain their trust for a radical idea he'd had in his mind for years. He wanted to make an RPG where players could explore the world and collect tiny monsters to battle. Yes, that's right, it was Pokemon. Because of Mario and Wario's simple, goofy fun, Nintendo allowed him to create his animal-capturing masterpiece. That means the next time you catch a Pikachu, be sure to thank Super Mario. Number 4. The Origin of His Name People often think of the makers of Mario as being this huge, mega-corporation that is extremely rich. That certainly wasn't always the case. In the mid-80s, Nintendo was still trying to find a way to really explode in America. Back then, uh, video games were still mostly considered things you just played in the arcade, like Pac-Man or Donkey Kong. Nintendo really wanted to change that frame of mind, so they set up an office in Washington and began research on how to establish themselves here. Unfortunately, while working on this, they got a bit behind on the rent because they just kept forgetting to pay it, and they had a very scary landlord. One day during a meeting about an upcoming project, the man who owned the property, Mario Sagali, burst into the room and demanded his money. These executives were so frightened that they tried to calm him down, informing Mario that they had his cash, but that it would take a few days to get it to him. They also promised promised to rename their new hero Jumpman after him. And with that simple act, Super Mario finally had a name, and from there, he went on to become the most recognized character in gaming. Number 3. His Secret Violent Past a game can change a lot in the time between when it's pitched to when it finally releases. No title is this probably more true for than the original Super Mario Bros. In the early concept art, we see that our friendly hero wasn't going to simply hop on people's heads, but instead carry a gun to splatter his enemies into bloody bits and then fly away on a cloud like Goku. Many of these concepts were actually well liked by the team, but they found themselves held back by the hardware they had. The NES was essentially a very primitive computer and they had to make some major changes to get it working smoothly. During the testing phases, they couldn't get the death animations right, and his guns seemed to slow down the gameplay a lot, so they changed the whole system so that instead he'd use a fire flower. What's kind of funny is that the designers still wanted to come back to this first idea so badly that they just randomly put it in the Game Boy Project Super Mario Land for no reason. The cloud he was going to fly on was turned into a plane, but they kept his shooting skills intact. Personally, I'm really thankful that Nintendo decided again against having our happy hero carry a machine gun. Number 2. The real Mario 2 is insane. Here in America, we got Super Mario's first adventure in 1985 with a rather weird follow-up Mario 2 in 1988. In Japan, they got a totally different sequel to this classic platformer that featured some ultra-hard levels meant to keep gamers busy while they began work on the epic Super Mario Bros. 3. This part of history is well known except for one tiny detail. There actually exists another Mario 2 that's pretty much been lost forever. What you're looking at here is the very rare and really, really bizarre Super Mario Brothers special. 
In this, the physics were clearly altered to make everything faster and more floaty. New enemies were crammed in from other games just to basically confuse gamers and throw them off, and the colors are really screwed up. Perhaps strangest of all though, this wasn't made for a Nintendo console, but in fact for a Japanese personal computer. It seems like back in the day they were trying so hard to make extra money they started seeing if anyone would buy their products even for other systems. Watching this gameplay in action sort of makes me glad that this ported side project failed so badly because it appears to have motivated them to try harder at making cool games for the original Nintendo instead. Number 1. Mario's Biggest Fan I'm sure we've all met that person who's extremely into one video game franchise. They dedicate their whole lives to just playing and mastering a particular series until it becomes part of their personality. This kind of passion can be a unique thing to see, but it's absolutely fascinating when you encounter it. Shigeru Miyamoto is the perfect example of this idea. The man who invented Mario on a piece of paper all those years ago has grown to love him more than probably anyone else on the planet. Although he mostly avoids playing his own creations on camera, the few times he has, we glimpsed a man so completely in love with his art that it's become his soul. As Miyamoto tries a level, we can hear him humming the theme song with joy. He screams as he dodges bad guys and shouts in utter shock when he dies. For him, he gets to become Mario the second he picks up the controller. There's a pure sort of beauty to knowing that this man has built a kingdom of adventure for all of us to explore, when really, it's Shigeru Miyamoto himself who gets the most out of it. And for that reason, I'm awarded this my pick as the strangest fact about Mario games. Did your favorite piece of trivia not make the list? Got an idea for a future video? Leave it in the comments down below! If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But, do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. I want to say a very special and very genuine thank you here. This week, I actually went full-time on YouTube. I'm doing this as my job now. When I was a little kid, I used to always read Nintendo Power and Electronic Gaming Monthly, gaming magazines, and I used to dream of someday getting to grow up and write about video games myself. And now I'm getting to do that because of your support. So thank you. You've made this random gamer the happiest guy in the world. And it's because of your support. It's because you share videos. It's because of the likes. It's because of the comments. And it's because you guys keep pushing me to improve. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, maybe check out my last video. Please subscribe, and if you want, share this somewhere with your friends.